Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. While the Northern Valley is already seeing the makings of stormy weather, conditions are ripe here in the Southern Valley, including the FM Metro. It's hard to believe we need to warn people about strong winds after the last couple of days, but that's part of it. Let's get the latest on what's happening right now and what to expect in the next couple of hours. Hutch? Today is a Valley News Live weather alert day. Indeed it is. We have an active tornado warning continuing for Roseau County. This storm is moving northeast at about 40 miles per hour. A funnel was sighted with this storm as it was close to the Greenbush area. Now it's moving its way over the Badger area. It's very far from the radar. So any signatures that we're getting from the velocity showing the rotation pretty weak because it's looking so high up in the cloud. But the storm is still quite dangerous. Could be producing one inch diameter hail as it works its way up north and east along Highway 11. It looks like it's going to miss Roseau proper, but we'll be heading towards Fox and Pine Creek in the next half hour. A new severe thunderstorm warning for hail to one and a half inches in diameter. 70 mile per hour winds will be possible with this particular storm as it's really developing uh, in an unstable environment. Moving northeast at 45 miles per hour will be in Fairdale by 637. Brock at 611, a little bit closer to you. And Eric Whitehill, our storm chaser, is out and about keeping his eyes on developing storms just west of Valley City. He's actually located just south of Sanborn as he has storms approaching. Here's a look at his live video feed as we continue to keep our eyes on the skies for you. Here's the setup. We have a cold front, Mike, that's moving through the area. That cold front is going to mingle with this hot and muggy air. And there is the boundary of the cold front out ahead of it in the warm, juicy air. We're seeing thunderstorm develop here south of Jamestown off to the north and east of Grand Forks and a new warning looks like it was just issued there not far from Eric Whitehill. I'll be on that here in just a minute but our risk tonight in the next few hours we're going to have a risk for an isolated tornado or two and the hail will also be at its largest in the next hour or two. After that this becomes a wind threat as we go into the overnight hours we could still see hail and flooding rains. I'll time it all out and give you the latest in your forecast here in just one moment. And of course, if you get a warning, you let us know. We'll cut right in, okay? You bet. All right. Fargo officials say the trust is broken between police and the community, and the work is beginning to restore it. This comes after results of an investigation into the conduct of a former longtime police officer. Former Deputy Chief Todd Osmondson resigned after going undercover without permission during the May 30th riot. Uh, putting officers in danger. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro explains. The mayor and police chief say they have a long road ahead of them. I, I feel very strongly that we have to be a community. People of color do not feel threatened or, or biased or anything like that, where people feel comfortable living here, raising their children, going to work. On Wednesday, a 23-page report was made public into former Deputy Chief Todd Osmondson. It found Osmondson violated several rules by putting other officers' lives at risk when he went on the cover without permission during the May 30 riots. One of his colleagues stated this was no small mistake or a mere human error. Chief Todd says he was shocked when he read the report of Osmondson's actions. The mayor and the police chief acknowledged that the actions that were done by the former chief deputy helped erode trust, and their plan is to rebuild that one step at a time. You work so hard to build those bridges and that engagement and that communication. And then you have a, an incident where all of a sudden that just kind of wipes all of that off the map. The report was done by Eternal Affairs, but sent directly to Mayor Tim Mahoney's office. Mayor Mahoney says it's time for the city to move forward. I think most police officers in, uh, that did a great job that evening, and it was difficult. I mean, you try to ask people to disperse, they don't disperse, what do you do next? And it's not something we'd like to repeat in our community. The city was receiving pressure from the local Black Lives Matter and One Fargo to release its findings. They accused police of using illegal surveillance and Osmondson specifically of inciting and instigating the riot. Yet the report shows that was not the case. There was no coordinated effort. Osmondson acted alone. And I'll let the report speak for itself. Um, I did not have a hand in it other than being interviewed. Chief Todd added morale among police is low. You, you take some pretty vile verbal abuse all throughout the day, but you keep yourself restrained, you keep yourself professional, and then you're hit by rocks and, and, and parts of bricks. As for an email with Chief Todd called those who participated in the May 30 event, 
thugs and domestic terrorists. He apologized for the word thug. Domestic terrorists, though, perhaps does fit because of the damage and the destructive behavior that was happening. He says a criminal investigation into the riots remains ongoing. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. And a march is planned for this Friday by local organizers of Black Lives Matter and One Fargo. They tell us the case is closed and the incidents that happened on May 30th and that the mayor hasn't reached out. Their march will start in the morning at 9 at Island Park and they'll then go to City Hall. Now there's another march planned for Saturday. Makeshift weapons and a knife are believed to be part of a disturbance involving multiple people in Moorhead. It happened at 3.30 this morning in the 100 block of 16th Street South. A caller indicated that there were guns involved in the incident, but that wasn't the case. Officials say one person did need to be treated. However, at this time, no one is currently in custody. Police in Devil's Lake are warning the community about fake prescription drugs laced with fentanyl that have caused recent overdose deaths. Authorities say the fake pills are made to look like Percocet and Oxycontin, 30 milligram pills. The pills even have an M and a 30 MG engraved on them. Authorities say other towns across the Midwest are reporting the same problems. No word on how many people have died from the drugs. They're also sending a reminder about Good Samaritan laws. The law says you will not get into trouble if someone you know is overdosing and you call for help. Charges are being considered following a crash this morning that sent a 56-year-old woman from Texas to the hospital. Investigators say she was rear-ended while driving southbound on I-29 in Fargo. The driver of that car has been identified as 21-year-old Alexandra Jacobson of Fargo. The woman from Texas was expected to be okay. Minnesota is reporting 419 new cases along with 12 more deaths linked to the COVID-19 virus. This brings the death toll in the state to 1,325. Of those deaths, 1,051 happened in a long-term care facility. The state is reporting 419 new cases, bringing the active case count to 2,567. 27,404 people are listed as being recovered. North Dakota, meanwhile, is reporting 42 new cases of COVID-19 across the state. 17 of those cases are in Cass County. No new deaths have been linked to the disease, meaning the death toll still sits at 74. 25 patients are currently in the hospital, while 2,756 are listed as being recovered. A Minnesota board that licenses and sets training standards for all peace officers in the state plans to review the death of George Floyd. A report out of the Twin Cities says the Minnesota Board of Peace Officer Standards and Training is required to review all misconduct complaints against licensed police officers. The article, which ran in the Star Tribune, says if the complaint is ruled justified, the board can revoke any officer's license. All four Minneapolis police officers who have been charged in the May 25th death of George Floyd were fired from the department, but they are still licensed Minnesota police officers. Are you feeling a little quarantine fatigued? Well, coming up on Valley News Live at 6, some safe ways that might help. But next, we continue to track storms. A brand new warning in south central portions of North Dakota for Lamore and Stutzman County until 6.30. Large hail, gusty straight line winds and isolated tornadoes will be possible. Hold on one moment here. We've got a new uh, tornado warning update for Roseau County. Your tornado warning continues as it moves north and east of Badger. We'll have the very latest coming up right after this.